how many how many books did you have to write before you came to Midsummer Mayhem? Okay, that was my first novel. That's the first novel I ever wrote. That's impressive. Thank you. I feel very lucky. But I did work on it forever. <laughs> how long? Uh, how long did Midsummer Mayhem take you? I first drafted it in 2014, and I signed with my agent in 2017. Gotcha. And then I'm assuming, the, the, was he able to sell that draft or did you uh, have we, to rewriting it? We didn't have to do a ton of revision uh, with him uh, because I had literally just revised it in that uh, five week crazy um, spurt with joy. Um, so it was in pretty good shape. We did some minor revisions and then, um, yeah. Uh, and we didn't have huge, I didn't have huge revisions with my editor for that one either. So that was, that was good. <laughs> What did that, uh, did that luck continue? Are we talking another three years to get to much ado about baseball or did that one go a little bit faster? Uh, it went a little bit faster, but it was also super challenging to write. It was really hard to write. Um, I knew kind of what I, th there's a, there's some magical people in Midsummer's Mayhem that may or may not be from a Midsummer Night's Dream. And um, they're, they're kind of there's a magical competition going on and I knew I wanted to write a book about the other side of that competition and I had this idea um about uh because because the people the magical people in Much Ado care about sports and they care about math and science whereas the magical people in Midsummer's Mayhem care about cooking and baking and music and art and um as we know all the children in these in these stories know that all of these things are important, but the magical people seem to take sides. So, <laughs> so I wanted to write about um, uh, Team Salty, which is you know the, the sports and math people. And I had this idea for um, dual protagonists, a girl and a boy who are both math competition rivals and uh, they find themselves on the same summer baseball team and they have a history. Um, and uh, you know they don't really like each other, even though they have so much in common. But they have to find a way to work together because they're on the same baseball team. And uh, and then there are magical math puzzles, and there are mysterious snacks that may or may not help their baseball team. And uh, you know, once each of the kids gets a um, math booklet and with fun puzzles, and once they start solving them, they're a horrible baseball team that could not by their way to a win suddenly starts winning and winning and can't it can't stop winning basically but then the kids get to a puzzle that they can't solve and something bad happens and then they've got to figure out can they find the ultimate answer that is promised in these math books or are they going to strike out <laughs> when it counts the most so I it was hard because I had never written anything from dual points of view before uh I had a really hard time at first figuring out how to make these characters distinct from one another and yet not make one of them like unlikable uh, because they both are likable and but they have their own issues that they're not you know they don't reveal to each other until much later and then for the life of me I could not figure out what the heck the magical people wanted and so it really I was sitting there going I don't know like wh why why are they doing this so Honestly, the plot. No, <laughs> <laughs> the way I found myself through this story was to write a synopsis. And that's not standard practice for you. That, that was that a new it, experience? It was not until this book. Because I was like, I hate synopses. Like you're taking my beautiful story that has so much nuance and you're boiling it down to like nastiness, like just like, and then this happened and then that happened. But I'm telling you. I was like, if I can write a synopsis that makes sense, then I can write this book. <laughs> so I wrote a synopsis that made sense, apparently. And then I wrote the book almost exact, like I wrote the book and it followed what I said in the synopsis. So I was very proud of myself. Now, obviously, uh, for, for both of these books, you are, uh, you, you're, you're, you're not borrowing you're just uh you're repurposing a little bit of Shakespeare here and there clearly we've got a bit of a, a Beatrix as it Be Beatrice Beatrice and Benedict thing going on yes how how much do you feel it's strict to do a one-to-one -one two Shakespeare's version I mean do you have to get right down to here's the appearance of Don John or can you just take what you like and leave the rest 
And it does that help me with your synopsis if you just follow the play? Uh, ooh, okay. So I knew I did not want to do a straight retelling uh, for both of these books, for Midsummer's Mayhem and Much Ado About Baseball, mainly because uh, middle grade readers in general have not read these books. They have not read, read Shakespeare's plays. So what, like, what am I even, like, what is the point of retelling them for them? I wanted to take inspiration from those plays and tell a different story. So Midsummer's Mayhem is about a girl who loves to bake and she uh, is the youngest of four in a big Indian American family. And she feels a little bit lost and forgotten in her own family because all her siblings are much older than her and they're really awesome at all the things that they do. And she feels like she's not that good at anything. Then she learns about uh, a new bakery that is holding a kid's baking contest. And she feels like if she could just win that contest, she can finally prove that she is not the least talented member of her family. But then she meets some, uh, she, she listens to this strangely familiar music coming from the woods behind her house. And she follows um, that uh, music into the woods and she meets uh, a boy who also loves to bake. And so together they kind of bake up all kinds of interesting treats. And then everyone around her starts acting really weird, including her dad, who is a food writer and he's supposed to be helping her bake, but he can't tell the difference between delicious food and disgusting food. So. Basically, it is inspired by A Midsummer Night's Dream. The framework has to do with A Midsummer Night's Dream, like what is really going on. But the story is about this 11-year-old girl who wants to feel special in her own family. I Similarly, love the idea that uh, your reader will eventually read the actual play and then just throw it down like Shakespeare ripped off with Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the same thing happened with Much Ado About Baseball, which is the heart of that play to me is the delightful antagonism between Beatrice and Benedict and how they're clearly meant for each other, but they can't get over themselves to be together without some trickery from their friends. And so similarly, Trish and Ben, you caught, you caught it, right? Beatrice and Benedict, Trish and Ben, um, they both love math and they both love baseball. And they should be friends, but they can't, just can't get there without a little help from somebody else. <laughs> and of course, because this is middle grade, we're, we're going to see a wonderful friendship that blossoms rather than marriage and happiness forever. <laughs> yes, no, no marriage in this book, at least not between these two. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe you'll write a sequel where you catch up to them, you know, 10 years later and we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> And I had read someplace that, that uh, your three favorite uh, Shakespeare plays were Midsummer Night's Dream, Much Do About Nothing, and The Tempest. So obviously my next question is, are we going to see your version of The Tempest at some point? All I can say is I'm working on it. I, re I do, I, I would love to write a book um, that's based on The Tempest. And I've got, I've got some ideas. They're all swirling around. It's been a little bit of a crazy year, but I'm trying to get my head together on that. So yes, I'm trying. You ever Fingers see yourself crossed. maybe tackling like, uh, I don't know, tragedy, Macbeth, the middle grade version or anything like that? I don't, I, I think of all the tragedies, the Shakespearean tragedies, that is probably the one that I might be able to tackle um, just because like you could make it very cartoony and the witches are really cool. And, um, you know, maybe if you don't have death, <laughs> maybe if it's just like, selfishness and greed that kind of thing we could i could get away with it but we'd have to see fingers crossed i hope you find a way to to do it <laughs> thank you <laughs> or heck give chris marlowe some love whatever 